Hello everyone, welcome to our next video. Today we are going to discuss about the different types of amino acids. We have already discussed the characteristics and some configurations of the amino acids and today we are going to look into the types of amino acids. As we all know there are 22 amino acids found in proteins. So let us look into those 22 amino acids and we will discuss these types as it is going to be a long video. So we are going to divide it into separate videos. So today this is the first of the different videos that we are going to put out on these types of amino acids. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, so the types of amino acids are actually, if we classify them, these 22 amino acids, we are going to get actually three groups. The first group is the non-polar amino acids, second group is the uncharged non but polar amino acids and the third group is the charged polar amino acids. So these three groups are going to cover the amino acids that we are going to study. So for our first video, we will go into details about the uh, non-polar amino acids that we have out of these 22 amino acids. So let's get started with that. Okay, so as I have mentioned earlier, there are 22 amino acids. Now out of these 22, there is the abundance of these amino acids in the proteins that are formed are actually different. So we have four amino acids, which are leucine, serine, lysine, and glutamic acid. These four amino acids are the most abundant. I have written the short form. So most abundant amino acids are these four. In the proteins, these four amino acids are found in the highest number. And the least abundant or the most rare amino acids that are found in uh, the proteins are tryptophan and methionine. Now, if you are not aware of their structure, that is why we are here. We are going to look into the structure of all these in these sets of videos where we are going to encounter the different types of amino acids. So just for an extra knowledge, extra tip that these four amino acids are the most abundant and these two are the least abundant. Okay. So now based on the properties of these amino acids, we are grouping them into three separate groups. Now if it is highly polar, if the compound the amino acid is highly polar, we are going to divide it into a separate group called the non-polar, uh, <coughs> highly polar then it is be a polar amino acid. Now based on the whether the amino acid is charged or uncharged, we are going to divide it into charged uh, polar amino acid and uncharged polar amino acids. And the amino acids which are not going to be polar, that is the non-polar amino acids that is going to be of a different group. So for today's video, we are going to talk about the non-polar amino acids. So out of those 22 amino acids, there are some amino acids which are non-polar and we are going to discuss about that. So let's get started with those. So let us look into the non-polar amino acids. So in total, there are 9 non-polar amino acids. So let us look into the first three. Okay, so this amino acid here, this one is called glycine. Now, as we all know, the structure of amino acids contain one R group and the difference in the R group will give us what amino acid it is. So in this amino acid, this is our R group. This is the R group and here this is the R group, the side chains. Okay, so in case of glycine, the R group is also a hydrogen atom. So just like we have one hydrogen in all the amino acids, we have hydrogen atom here as well. Now the question arises, which I mentioned in my first video, that we will talk about one amino acid which is different from the rest, which does not contain a chiral carbon atom is this amino acid the glycine because in order to have a chiral carbon atom we must have four different groups attached to the, car the central carbon. Here we have C double minus NH3 plus which are different but here hydrogen is similar in both these cases. As a result this carbon, this alpha carbon is not going to be a chiral carbon. That is why glycine does not show the optical activity. We studied about optical activity in our second lecture. In that one also I said except one, except one amino acid, all the others show the optical activity. That one amino acid is the glycine, the simplest amino acid which contains only a single hydrogen as the R group. It will not show any optical property as because it does not have a chiral carbon center. I hope that is clear. So this is the first amino acid glycine H. 
only H. If we move into the next one, we have our second amino acid, the alanine. It has one methyl group, CH3 group, attached to as the R group along with this whole common structure as we have seen in our earlier general structure of amino acids. So it has one methyl group. In case of valine, it has one extended form here we have three carbons. So it will be a propyl group CH, CH3 and CH3. So three carbons attached to the general structure of the amino acid. Okay, so very simple just know the structures and the property is that these are non-polar. We'll have uh, six more amino acids coming in here. So <clears throat> since these are non-polar, they will not be reacting with water. These are going to be hydrophobic. Okay, at physiological pH, they are not good. These side chains are not going to react with water. They only contain carbon and hydrogen. As you can see here, these only contain carbon and hydrogen with no charge, no polarity. As a result, these will not be able to react with water. So whatever amino acids we are going to see in the in this video are going to be non-reactive to water because they are non-polar. I hope that is clear because these are very simple things. Now, another thing, these are all aliphatic side chains. They are not aromatic. They don't have ring structure. These are aliphatic state chains. Okay, these are state chains, these are or branched, state or branched are aliphatic and if you have a ring like structure then it becomes aromatic. We will look into the aromatic as well but these three are containing the chain or branch structure, state chain or branch structure. So these three are the first of the three amino acids of non-polar side chains. Now we will move into the next three. Now let us move into the next trio of leucine, isoleucine and methionine. So in case of leucine, we are going to have an extended version of the previous amino acid we started in, in our first trio. Here we are going to have four carbons, butyl group. So CH2, CH, CH3, CH3. In our previous one, that is in valine, we had CH, CH2, CH3, CH3, a propyl group. Here we are going to have one butyl group. Okay, so CH2, CH, CH3, CH3, again an aliphatic side chain, non-polar, not going to react with water. Okay, now isoleucine. Isoleucine contains a branch structure here. Okay, in this carbon earlier it was not branched, here it is. Here we have carbon attached to one hydrogen, one methyl group and here we are going to have CH2, CH3, one ethyl group. Okay, CH, CH3 and CH2, CH3. So two ethyl groups added. Okay, this is isoleucine. Again the same property, aliphatic, hydrophobic, so not going to react with water. Now we come to methionine which is one of the rarest amino acids as we saw earlier as I told you earlier it is one of the most least abundant amino acids. So here what is the difference in this amino acid? Here we have unlike all the other amino acids we have studied till now we have one sulfur in the R group. Sulfur. There are only two amino acids that actually contain uh, this sulfur this methionine and we have one cysteine. Cysteine and methionine contain sulfur. So these are the two sulfur containing amino acids. Okay. So sulfur is present in methionine that differentiates this from this amino acid from the rest. And it is also one of the rarest uh, amino acids that you are going to find in the proteins. I hope that's clear. Same property, aliphatic chain, hydrophobic and not going to react with water. Okay. Now let's move into the last trio. Now we are into the last trio of the three amino acids in the aliphatic side chain. So the first one is phenylalanine. So the difference we are going to have in these two, we are going to have ring structures. Okay. Well, earlier we all saw the aliphatic side chains. Now we are going to see aromatic side chains. So these two are aromatic side chains and this is one special protein, the proline. So we will look into that at last. So first let's look at phenylalanine. It contains one phenyl group or phenyl ring. So this phenyl ring, it is just <coughs> like a benzene ring. So it will contain a carbon attached to it. So that's why it is a phenyl ring. So from the name itself, you can know what type of ring is there. It is an aromatic uh, side chain hydrocarbon. So yes, because it is aromatic, it will be absorbing light. So we'll talk about that later. It will be absorbing some light, giving us some uh, absorptions in the absorption spectra of amino acids. So these things we will discuss later. As of now, just remember that it will help us in absorbing light in different experiments, spectro spectrometry experiments also, phenylalanine, tryptophan, they help us a lot, okay. So next is tryptophan. 
Tryptophan contains an imidazole ring. It contains a phenyl ring. This contains an imidazole ring. This sort of ring where we have a six-membered ring along with a five-membered ring is called an imidazole ring. So this whole thing is the uh, side chain. Here this is the side chain. One single ring. Here two rings combined. One five, uh, five-membered ring and one six-membered ring called an imidazole ring. So this is tryptophan and since this is aromatic, this will also uh, be able to absorb light at different wavelengths okay so these two are different they are aromatic side chains but they are non-polar they don't have any charge they don't have any polarity okay so these two are the only two amino acids which fall in the non-polar uh, group and are also aromatic in nature the side chains and the last one is the proline the proline is not an aromatic ring it is just a ring structure and this is formed by you can see the NH3 group which is present in amino acids. This NH, the side chain is, this is the side chain of this amino acid. CH2, CH2, CH2. But it gets bonded to the NH3, NH3 plus or NH2 plus group of the amino acid. So this is actually the side chain. This NH2 part is actually the, this NH3 plus of the original structure of the amino acid. In case of proline only, only in case of proline, we are going to have this sort of ring structure where the side chain gets bonded to the amino group. I hope that is clear. Only in proline, we will find the side chain being bonded to the amino group. Okay, so that's what makes proline different from the other amino acids. In no other amino acids, the 22 amino acids that we are going to study, we are going to see such phenomena. So that's why, that's why proline becomes a different amino acid uh, in compared to all the others. So that is all about the non-polar amino acids and this will be the end of our video for today. But we still have the polar amino acids which are uncharged and polar amino acids which are charged. And we are also going to study about two special amino acids which falls under the 22 amino acids because generally we see 20 amino acids that make up the proteins but there are two more which are selenocysteine and pyrolysine and we are going to study about this these are actually modifications of the amino acids that we are going to study now okay so <clears throat> we are going to study about these 22 amino acids plus we are also going to study about some non-standard amino acids these amino acids that we have studied till now and the amino acids that we are going to cover in our next two videos which are all standard amino acids. By standard amino acids, I mean the amino acids which are found in proteins. There are approximately 300 amino acids that are present in uh, nature. But out of these, only 22 amino acids participate in forming proteins. So that's why these 22 are called the standard amino acids. And the remaining amino acids out of the 300 are called the non-standard amino acids. So we are also going to study about non-standard amino acids in our last video of this series. So please stay tuned for those and thank you for watching. See you next time and peace.